patients with generalized myasthenia usually respond to mestinon. So the army of anti-immunosuppressive drugs that we have usually work for patients with generalized disease, and at least half of them will tell me their eyes are better. Maybe not perfect, but they're better. The pure ocular patients don't. They often don't respond to mestinon and the other, the other treatments. They usually respond to immunosuppression. So we start with prednisone, which in my experience has worked marvelously well. Prednisone is a remarkable drug. It's an anti-inflammatory that's been around since 1960s, has remarkable results, but side effects, diabetes, high blood pressure, ulcers of the stomach, and osteoporosis. Oh, so both the disease and the therapy can hurt you. Yes, and hurt you, bad, so you have to be careful. But that may be the only thing that works, and if we're going to do that, maybe we're going to add onto that some azathioprine, some imuran, something, some cell sap, something else to try to get us to get the eye muscles to work, and half the time we'll win and half the time we won't. So what do you do? First you use mestinon, because even in pure ocular, it may just be the ocular manifestation of systemic disease. So we'll use mestinon first, we'll move to prednisone if the eye symptoms are prominent, and then azathioprine, cyclosporin, cell sept, tacrolimus, or IVIG. And the problem with all of these is that there's nothing that's perfectly safe. These are all drugs that can seriously hurt you. They can suppress your immune system, cause massive infections and death. And so we kind of have to be careful of how we do this. And you want to dance around that combination of medications that gets you enough of a response so that the patient is comfortable most of the time. Are we ever going to make it go away? Don't know. Do people go into remission all the time? This, the problem, again, is variability. You never know if, if remission is really remission or if it's just variable. So what do we do for the eyes? What we do for the eyes is we put prisms in glasses if the deviation is stable or predictable. So if a patient comes in and says, at night it's always horizontal or at 10 o'clock, I try to get him to come in as late as we can, we measure it. And if we put a pair of glasses up that says, you know, the little head turn or something, it's comfortable, we use it. 80% of the time people will say, well, it's better. Maybe not perfect, but it's better than nothing possible multiple pairs of glasses. I have a little bit of double vision at noon, I have a lot of double vision at seven o'clock at night. We try to come in, do the measurements, see what we can do to make patients comfortable most of the time, understanding it's never going to be perfect. A ptosis crutch, which we can put on the frame of the glasses to hold the lid up. Now the problem with holding the lid up is that if you've ever tried to do that, after about 90 seconds, it hurts, your eye dries out. So you've got to be careful how well you position it, how much tearing the patient has. If you get older and have a decreased tear film, it's not going to work as well, but can be done. If the patient's walking around going, eh, you know, I'm getting a pain in the neck from this, you know, eyelids drooping all the time. Well, if they come in that way all the time, what you have, what I have them do next is photograph themselves several times during the day. It's what digital cameras are for. And if you can come in and demonstrate it really is just droopy all the time and you're on your maximal medical therapy, no reason not to send you off to the eyelid doctors and tell them just a touch. Just get it up enough so they don't have to tilt their head way back. And if you get it up too much, the eye starts to dry out, and that's a dangerous problem. So just eyelid surgery of ptosis is stable, and then someone, and I have had patients come in with years of myasthenia going, you know, the double vision's always this way. You've measured it for a year now. Can we do something? And the answer is yes. We do eye muscle surgery, and we get it straighter. Do we ever get away from prisms? No, but we use less prism. And if we can get away from prisms for part of the day, we win. But it has to be stable, treatment has to be stable, no exacerbations, nothing. And of course, the problem with that last line of that, that slide is that we said two slides ago that the hallmark of this disease is variability. Oh, so how are we gonna operate on somebody if their double vision changes? You're not.